Today on Exploring Nevada, we'll take you to a place steeped in history, but one which the average citizen will not casually tour. It's the old and still functioning Nevada State Prison in Carson City. In the heart of the old prison yard lies the original dungeon, dating back to territorial days, before Nevada was even a state. It was carved into the very sandstone quarry which supplied materials for not only the early prison buildings, but for structures in the nearby community a few miles to the west, against the Carson Range and the Sierra Nevada. From the prison's thick and well-guarded walls, you can see the Capitol Dome shining in the distance. Once the nation's smallest state capital, Carson City has grown and prospered. In today's episode, we'll learn how a prison can have a surprisingly positive effect on a capital. I'm Gwen Clancy for the Nevada Department of Cultural Affairs, and now we invite you to look into this unusual link in our state's history through the eyes of state archivist Guy Rocha. I call it connecting some dots in Carson City history, uh, Nevada State Capitol and the State Prison. And I want, maybe at the end of this, and this is being uh, taped for our, our production, Department of Cultural Affairs, we have a series that the citizens who see this production will have a better understanding of uh, the relationship of, of uh, the prisons, the correctional system in Carson City, and maybe even extrapolating that to Nevada and, and other places. Let me read for a, pre a prepared text, just initially to, to lay some groundwork. If I leave you with anything in my presentation today is that Carson City's rich and colorful history is forever linked to the territorial and state prison. Nevada's capital has grown with and around the prisons. The correctional system is almost as old as the town and virtually no ongoing business or institutional endeavor today predates the prison. The prison operation and prison labor have been integral to the infrastructure and life of Carson City. Unfortunately, many citizens choose only to see the negative side of prisons and the correctional system. Today I offer you another side to the story, a long-standing symbiotic relationship between Nevada's first and only capital and the prison system, shaping the face of our community for over 140 years. That's what I intend to do. Let's see if I do it. Okay, a little history contextually, and I'll be talking about uh, some of the, the wider trends and, and movements. What was here in the beginning? Indigenous people, the Washoe tribe, and they have a presence here today uh, in, our, in our community with their uh, respective colonies, Stewart Colony, which is of course very near the Stewart Conservation Camp, Carson Colony, but we had indigenous people who roamed this area for 10,000 years uh, with the Paiutes uh, at times at peace with them, at times at war with them, but this was really about uh, Native Americans until really the mid 19th century and in that time we saw explorers and others coming through here John C. Fremont and Kit Carson came by very close to this area in their 1843-44 uh, expedition uh, they they didn't know where they were going they relied on Washoe guides to get them there and, and, and over to Sierra Nevada to California what really began to transform this area and to bring non-Indian people here to essentially stay and dislocate the Washoe people was the Mexican-American War of 1846-1848 when the United States, with its uh, designs of expanding empire from coast to coast, went to war with the uh, Republic of Mexico and, and defeated them. And essentially this part of the world, which had been claimed by Mexico since 1821 and Spain long before that, now became part of the United States. The dynamic that you're probably aware of happened in 1848 and led to a tremendous activity in 1849, the gold rush. The California gold rush brought people other than Indians. It brought Caucasians, African Americans, Asian Americans. The world found the western part of the continent and they would find this valley, Eagle Valley, and it would get its name because of a very early station set up in 1851, the Eagle Station, because these early uh, traders killed an eagle, stuffed the eagle, put it over the door. Eagle Station, Eagle Valley. How do we get our names sometimes? Things happen, don't they? <laughs> that, that eagle <laughs> left, left his legacy. And uh, we are not Carson Valley technically here. We are, are Eagle Valley. Carson Valley is now considered the area to the south of us. So we have some initial 
uh, settlement. We have all sorts of people traveling through to California. We have some people doing some mining, uh, Gold Canyon, Dayton nearby. Uh, the population is small. We also are part of a new jurisdiction. It's Utah Territory. Based out of, of essentially Salt Lake City, we have a territorial governor by the name of Brigham Young, who is also the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There's colonization efforts here. Mormons are sent to this part of the world because there's talk of becoming part of California, becoming a new territory. There's strong feelings at this time that are, are anti-Mormon, very dynamic. The three big issues prior to the Civil War is what do we do with the Indians? What do we do with slavery? And what do we do with the Mormons? And it was a very, very complex time. And in that time, those of you who remember the experience of, of Waco and the activity just south of Waco there, we had a situation where federal troops were sent into Utah Territory and Salt Lake essentially to conquer a piece, portion of the new territorial governor uh, that replaced Brigham Young. He was asked to step down and he refused to step down, was able to uh, essentially negotiate a peace. But all the people that were here that were Mormons were called back. And a flood of people came over from California for all the opportunities that were here. And this is the beginning of Carson City. Okay, they're going to be essentially four principal people, but the one you'll come to know and appreciate, those of you who have some knowledge of the history of our prison system, is Abe Curry. Abe Curry, our first territorial warden. And uh, Abe Curry is, is quite the entrepreneur from New York. We have a representative from New York State today. Abe Curry... <laughs> Abe Curry found his way to California, but seeing opportunity here, uh, by August 1858, the uh, area of Carson City is founded, and Abe Curry would construct out there at Warm Springs, east, to, east of the new town. At that time, that was east of Carson City, from sandstone in an adjacent quarry. He built the Warm Springs Hotel, and that would, as I talk about, as we begin to develop into our own ju jurisdiction, would evolve into our state prison. What happens? Clearly all these newcomers do not want to be under what they consider Mormon control, even though the, the uh, territorial governor of Utah is a Gentile or non-Mormon. And this effort ultimately results in the creating of Nevada Territory, March 2nd, 1861, one of President James Buchanan's last act, acts was to create this county. And the big dynamic at that time is they brought in territorial governor James W. Nye from New York City, who, who was the police commissioner in New York in the days of Tammany Hall. He was, he was brought here to essentially uh, ensure that this new territory remain in the Union as we were approaching a civil war and southern states had seceded from the Union. The battle was who gets the territorial capital. Virginia City is booming on the Comstock, major mineral discoveries. Clearly this new territory is going to be a critical part of the new union, it's gold and silver, as from other western states and territories would help underwrite the Civil War activity. And in that first territorial legislature, held at that Warm Springs Hotel, soon to be the location of the first territorial prison, that's where we held our first territorial legislature. A decision was made and the deals were cut and Carson City was designated the territorial capital. And it was at that legislative session that that entrepreneur from New York Abe Curry was appointed the first territorial warden and a portion of that complex was leased at that time as the territorial prison. 